Well, hi there folks. Happy New Year, if I hadn't already said that. So, my latest project. After the amazing success of my four-engined Mini Lidl, which runs with four tiny little drone motors, I've decided I'm going to build a single-engine version of this little Lidl. Now, incidentally, this Lidl is called the Plative Delta Sport, but it's also often in the shops around the same time as the other Lidls, or you can buy these anywhere on online. So, what's the plan? I've read of other people trying to do this and having problems with power to weight ratio. Model weighs in at 45 grams. Actually, thinking about it, inside there, there is a, there is a counterweight in the nose, so I might get that down a bit once I've hollowed it out. It's quite a decent, dense foam. The plan is, and I've been through very carefully weighing components, plan is to use one of these tiny little Race Star BR1104 motors. I've got a little prop saver here. The biggest problem I've had is finding props for this. But anyway, with a 3x2 prop. That's the plan. Got first time ever I've got one of these tiny little receivers. I'll list all the weights of these online, but I mean the receiver itself weighs 2.5 grams. Smallest speed controller I could find was this one. I like to have a model finder in. That adds 6 grams. And the servos also are about 6 grams a pot. So the question is really whether I use two or three. It would be ailerons and elevator. I'm working on the idea to keep weight down of putting just one in the middle with levers moving that way. That will save me six grams. We'll see how we get on with that as we move on. And of course it needs a lipo which comes in at about 15 grams. From what I've seen online should get about 100 grams of thrust from this little motor with a 3x2 prop. So component weight with the model about 88 grams and 100 grams of thrust that should be more than enough to power this little model. Who knows? Anyway I think it should be okay. So that's the project. Stay tuned and we'll get on with first step taking this off and hollowing out the body. And then obviously I've got to cut some ailerons, cut some elevators, probably put the elevator servo under here with a snake so that I don't put too much weight aft. Obviously the other thing you do very early on before you even start this project is figure where the designed CG is, which is about here. Right, so let's get on with getting that off and hollowing it out. Right, so step one. Oh, incidentally, if you haven't already seen, now so far I've actually made nine big little glider conversions, ranging from singles to twins to EDF to my Spitfire to Vulcans. Check out the links for those. But it's a whole new challenge working with these tiny little gliders. So, like I say, first step is get this off. Never work towards your hand with a blade, because if you stick it through, it goes in your hand. But um, get this off with a bit of levering like that. Try and keep it intact. Okay, so there we are. Um, and as I said, there is a little counterweight in there. Oh, quite heavy. Right, well, that's 11.4 grams. So that brings the weight of the model down to less than 35. Incidentally, the all-up weight of my four-engine one without a LiPo is only 54, 54 grams, which is quite amazing for a four-engined little plane. OK, so next step, I'll put a couple of blobs of hot glue on here just to hold that in position. Not quite sure how I'm going to make the elevator yet because it's nice to have a complete one that goes across. So I'm probably going to have to cut this back in some way so that I can make it all one piece. Anyway, so hollow this out with a piece of hot wire. And as you can see here, the trick there is to actually cut through that bit. This bit pulls off quite nicely. OK, right, so hot glue, hollow, in jo hollow out job. Right, well, it's down to 34 grams. Hollowed it out quite a bit and only went a bit too far in one place. And this is my hollowing out tool. Just use that over the gas and go through and slice it up. Actually gone in quite a long way into there as well. OK, so next step is going to be to cut some ailerons and figure whether I'm going to use one servo to save some weight, 
one servo in the middle operating two. I think that could work quite well. Yeah. OK, so I'll show you when I've sorted that, but it's a question of sharp blade. I've covered most of this stuff in my other little videos, how you cut elevators. It's more difficult on this little tiny glider because there's not a lot of meat there to work with. OK then, well, these are very small servos, offering it up, that mounting that in the middle with a couple of operating levers this way, if you imagine that buried in the top. Yeah, that could work, saves me six grams. Right, I'm going to think on that, otherwise it's going to be, it's going to be make a hole there, bury that inside, slightly in, in, indented into the wing. I don't think there's enough thickness in that wing to take the depth of that, but I'd probably get two thirds of it in anyway. Right, so I'm going to have a think on that, and by the time I come back, you'll see what I've decided to do, just like this. Right, well, OK, you can see I went for the one servo in the middle route. Less weight, less vulnerable, plus at some point I probably will have to put a servo here for the elevator, and it might have to go here with the snake. So that's the solution. Goes in quite nicely that way. I'm going to recess it to the point where the only thing that's above the top of the fuselage is is the operating arm. And of course, the operating arms, light gauge wire, will have to have a little V-bend in so that I can adjust the trim and so on. But I think that's going to be quite neat. It's out of the way. Should do the job. I'll show you when I've pretty much finished that bit. And then, as I say, I've got to cut the cut the ailerons and I'm, instead of using their marked out position I'm going to come right inboard as far as I can so that I can put the activating arm right here and you see if that's inclined slightly downwards that actually doesn't give a bad angle on either side yeah I'm, I'm pleased with that idea right okay onwards and upwards right so having done that bit Time to cut some ailerons. I'm going to make them, as I said, I'm going to make them slightly longer so that my push rods can go right here. Slightly wider this way makes it, I mean, cutting into fatter material here and gives it more authority. Right, so they're going to be 20 centimeters, going to be about here. Twenty centimeters. Let's come out to. I don't want to be on the curve. Where does the curve start? About here. What's that? One thirty by twenty. And one of those is longer than the other. Why? Twenty is there. Right. That looks about right. Biro would have worked better. And then it's the question of making cut, cut, and very shallow cut here, which I'm not going to do on camera because it's too tricky. I've got to do it comfortably. But obviously one has to make sure you don't go right through. So what I usually do is make a shallow cut and then feel as I'm going through so that I've just got that very last little bit left there. Right, back in a minute. Right, so a little bit more. This is the trick here to make sure you don't go too far. Just bend it. A 
and this blade isn't very good but it's kind of getting there just bend it until it's flexing just about a right the right amount like that almost there yeah it's almost there and then it's a question of cutting a very fine well on a big little glider it's better because you've got more more material to play with but and then cut a very fine bevel so that you've got full range of movement there okay I'm going to work on that a little bit more off camera until it's about the right flexibility and plus as you can see I've given it some clearance at the ends right right well I think they've got about the right amount of flexibility so the next step is to cut the bevel which you do by placing it on an, on an edge like this and use a really sharp blade I'm going to get another blade out because this one isn't good enough and cut 45 degrees across here like this but I'm not going to do it stood here I'd like to get close up to it with my glasses on so that I can see what I'm doing and then what I'll do afterwards is I'll put some scotch crystal cape scotch crystal tape along there just for good measure so I'm pleased with the way that's going I think that's looking good and that's going to work yes right no expense spared for this like I say new blade new blade works wonders if I can figure out how to get it out perhaps you come back that way back that way yes push it no why don't they want to come out Okay, once, once I've figured out how to get the blade out. New blade. Ah, oh, that's more like it. In. Oh, well. Modern technology. Right, well, I've cut my bevels. It's not the easiest job. But I've got good range of movement there. You're probably actually better off doing this before gluing the wing in, because then you can work much easier on it whereas I've had to work around the fuselage and obviously I can't get it out now because I've made a hole in it and glued it in but anyway uh, that's what I usually actually do it's easier on the bigger little models but anyway quite pleased with that need some wire I haven't actually got any wire to do my connecting I wish I'd come in even further but I think that's going to be okay could have even come in slightly more but um, I'm just going to put a bit of scotch crystal on there which is like sellotape but better um, then I've got to put on a couple of actuators and what I use is a couple of the spare servo arms just melt a small hole glue it in hot glue dead easy right onwards and upwards and as I said before don't forget to center your servos before fitting them in the way you do that is one of these little gadgets I'll put a link to it on the down below in comments put power in one side a 1s will do or you can use a uh, the beck on a speed controller put it in the right sockets which is that one lights are on one lets you move the servo manually the other one is the neutral position which is what you want and the other one is an automatic position that just keeps winding it back and forward so put it in the neutral position and when I say about centering these obviously you want that to be bang in the middle you can allow for a little bit the splines on these do allow for a bit of movement actually that's slightly better there so I think that's going to be good enough for neutral so I could actually go ahead and glue that in now yeah very important you do that okay simple enough I said as I say I put a link to it right and unplug it and don't move it in fact you could unplug it and put in the tiny little screw that came with it which I've lost already anyway they're in there somewhere okay back in a minute ah I've got it I'll put it in now otherwise I will lose it right so that slots in there nicely actually it's not very true is it I'll have to adjust it so I I'll have to adjust it so it's so it's sitting horizontal 
but that sets in there nice with a slight downwards incline so it's going to go towards the actuators on here and I think that's um, pretty cool pretty good and weight saving right well that's sitting absolutely perfectly now it's going to do the job all I had to do was a bit of magic melting in the hole with my magic hot spoon over the gas and to fix it I just put a couple of spots of hot glue there just to hold it in place but I'm well pleased with that idea just the job and still very light super right so having sorted out how my ailerons are going to work with this one center servo not glued in yet as you can see because I've still got to make the actuating arms the next design challenge is how to make an elevator on this because the tailplane on this is inset whereas on its big brother or is it big sister this is my little Spitfire full build blog is in there on the bigger littles the elevator hangs out from the tail so it's easy just to cut a V put a servo in chum 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 up and down and as you can see can't do that on here I'm either going to have to hack this what I'm thinking of doing is cutting it straight across there and putting a a small elevator flap off the back like so I think that's the easiest way to actually get around it so the next time you see it it will probably be on there and then the question I've got is I'll have to figure out I'll put I'm going to load this up with speed controller motor battery and then figure whether or not it it can cope with some tail weight because maybe a servo in here somewhere for the elevator but I can do that after I've actually figured how I'm going to make an elevator okay so let's get on with that don't go away right decision made first job is going to be just to trim this off so it's straight so that I can actually put one big elevator don't really want to put two don't really want to put two small ones right. yeah that'll work nicely and then a bit of foam board but then I think what I'll do is yep what I'm going to do is I can cut a V in this I didn't really want to chop the vertical stab so I can cut a V in that like that and then I'll have an elevator just a small elevator tacked on the back it will still look okay like so yeah that'll work great and it'll look all right super design stage two or is it three can't remember okay back in a bit right even better I found a bit of balsa from an old project and that would be much better yep lighter stronger thinner super okay so I've got that trimmed trimmed a piece of balsa to go on the the end which is good because it's nice and thin but then again I'm not sure I've also cut a bit of foam board but it's a bit it's rather a fat section which is going to make a horrible airflow around the edge of it yeah maybe so it's a question now of do I go foam board or do I go balsa yeah it's a tricky one right well that works looks all right looks in proportion once that's all glued up and got enough movement there yes that works good right problem solved move on okay so here it is the results of my design challenge I went with a foam board in the end I tried the balsa didn't think it looked right I think I've got proportions just about right compared to the whole model and taking a closer look foam board with scotch crystal on the top and scotch crystal on the joint underneath so that is pretty damn solid actually cut a bevel on that of course the same as the as the usual technique goes so that I get full range of movement there and all that remains is for me to glue it in place and figure 
where the servo is going to go, whether it's going to go at this end or whether it's going to go here or whether it's going to go here, depending on how the balance looks once I've got a motor on and a lipo in there and a receiver in and a model finder in there. So making good progress. It's actually been very quick and easy build really. So let's see what happens next. Don't go away. My next step is to mount the motor. Now I've never mounted a motor this tiny before. What I usually do is make a small bulkhead and hot glue it on, which I reckon I'll do the same with. Now I didn't want really to use ply, but I've got a bit of popsicle stick, as they call it on flight flight test popsicle. It's quite thin, but quite strong. Made a template of the holes. Why don't they supply one with these motors? Made a template by pushing some pushing some foil on and marking out where the holes were. Then transferred that onto my tiny piece of wood, punching holes through just to mark where I'm going to drill to take these absolutely tiny little screws and for some reason they only supply two that are actually long enough to go through. Yeah I don't think those would do much. Any road that's the plan um, and then it's going to be hot glued on. It's just a question of cutting the nose off with a super amount of down thrust, a couple of degrees of down thrust and perhaps a little bit of right thrust and I think that little popsicle stick if you can imagine it would be just about right to go on the front there. Right, okay, well I'll get my mini drill and drill these holes out. It is, it's actually nice to mount a motor so that you can adjust the down thrust if you want by putting shims in, but I can't imagine how it's possible with something as small as that. So it's going to have to be glued on. I'll take a chance on it, get it, try and guess it and get it right. Okay, well top tip. It's a learning experience for me as well. Popsicle stick is no good for making little bulkheads because it tends to split very easily. But I've got a little bit of thin ply here. I'm going to make it out of that, something I've salvaged from something else. Ply is always good, of course, because it's got cross grain. OK, just thought I'd tell you that. Right, well, that appears to be a bit more successful, although even with my careful template making, never quite get the holes in the right place. You can see that one's slightly off, so I have to make it oversized. And don't forget you need a hole in the middle to take that tiny little, so that that little tiny circlet there can rotate, because it does actually rotate. And you need a hole for the three wires to go through. And then they go through, obviously, when you cut that you make a small hole, hot wire or something to come through into here. OK, well, I'll attempt to get the screws into this now. And of course when you glue it, you don't want to get glue onto that. So what I usually do is just a tiny bit of glue on the top, on the sides here. Should be enough anyway. Right, well, I've got it mounted on this. The two longer screws that they supplied go through. And you've got to be careful that you don't actually go too far in, otherwise you'll fail the motor. And in my box of little tiny screws, I found one other one, little crosshead that is a perfect length. So it's got three and that's going to have to do and the wires come through nicely there. Uh, this is, as I said before, the smallest motor I've ever mounted. And I tell you what, I don't think I'll ever do another one. It is really tricky, but it'll be fun if this actually flies. Right, well, what I'm gonna do now is cut the nose in the right place so it's the right size for that. Little bit of down thrust, little bit of right thrust. And then I need to go and buy some wire to connect my actuating arms for the ailerons. And then I'm gonna try and figure out where the elevator servo is gonna go, depending on how it seems to balance with the weight of the motor and receiver and battery in here. OK, see you next time. OK, so the motor is mounted on its little mini bulkhead and I've cut the nose off this, ready to hot glue this on. But before that, it's always a good precaution to actually assemble the bits and pieces you're going to use and do a little test, which is what I did with this tiny little, very light, speed controller. Hooked it all up. I was hoping this is all going to work with a, a 1S because the the receiver will, the servos will, but all it would do is go zirp, zirp, occasionally really struggling to fire up. So the question was, was it a defective motor? I've never used one of these tiny receivers before either, so was it the receiver that couldn't, couldn't deal with this? 
or was it the speed controller? So tested it again against another receiver but with the same speed controller still wouldn't play the ball so then I tested it with another speed controller not with it actually won't work with a 1s but I tried it with a 2s and sure enough it works fine so nothing wrong with the motor it appears to me that this doesn't really work very well um, or doesn't like it won't slow start a brushless motor so I don't know what the weight difference is anyway not huge but that's not going to be used I might try it with something else another time so I'll just um, yeah actually I was just going to solder that on but in fact it's got to have can't solder it on it's going to have little it's going to have to have little bullet connectors so that I can poke that through and then connect the speed controller inside anyway that was just another tip dry assemble before you start so I'm really stuck at the moment. I've got to order some stuff. Let's order some wire of the right gauge so that I can actually connect these. And I've got to order some bullet connectors. So be back in a bit. Don't go away. OK, so progress report. Motor bulkhead is now hot glued on. Like I said, with a bit of side thrust, a bit of down thrust. My bullet connectors are soldered on. And incidentally, if you didn't know, if you find a motor spins the wrong way with these these brushless motors it's just a question of swapping over two out of the leads to undo two switch them around versus the direction other good news is I found a little tiny battery I was hoping this would work with a 1s because the receiver will servos will but I don't think the speed controllers do I've got the speed controller in and I've shortened the leads which I don't usually do I found a 2s battery that I'm going to use I'm going to have to change the way that I connect it to this because I've already put a JST on that. Got some thin gauge wire there to make my connecting rods for the ailerons and the other thing I can do of course is once I figure the angle that that's got to be to give the thrust in the right direction I can glue this in as well. And at this end here for the actuating levers on the ailerons what I do is don't buy little brackets just cut this off here. Oh, didn't want to go make a small hole in the aileron there and hot glue or you who pour that that one in there and then I can figure what angle that needs to be to give it the right line of thrust for those but this is taking shape really well and then I'm getting to the point where I can figure whether the elevator servo is going to go around here 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 because at the moment it's with the components I've got it's balancing at about its original CG as you can see here just about with just the weight of that speed controller and stuff is balancing about here so I think the elevator servo is probably going to have to go about here so the next time you see it I should have made considerable progress let's get on with it okay so as you can see my weight saving idea of one servo actuating two ailerons did work but it's taken me an hour or two to actually make these linkages and I've still got to adjust it by changing the shape of that V that one is not that one's hanging a bit on the low side and it's a bit sloppy there too which is really annoying me so it does work but for the saving of four or five grams or whatever it was I'm not sure if it's worth the effort but anyway it's all a learning experience um, and of course I'm just testing it there with servo tester but yeah what a job I think this is going to work anyway a bit more adjustment to do there yeah what a job that was not easy OK, so having got that servo installed now and my actuating arms for the ailerons in, knowing what battery I'm going to use, which is the 200 milliamp 2S, speed controller up here, battery up here, receiver tucked in there as far away as possible from the speed controller to avoid interference, I can now think about where I'm going to put this elevator servo. So I've actually figured it's going to be about, I still don't know what prop's going to be on it, but figure about there, and I don't know if you can see, but it's balancing about here. Still can't really install it until I know what prop I'm going to put on, because obviously that weight at the nose has quite an effect. So it certainly looks as though this elevator servo is going to go in somewhere along here. Maybe you can see that. No, maybe you can't. I don't know. So I think this is working out really well. Just telling you these things because it kind of shows the design process really when you're creating a model from something that was never intended to be a 
radio controlled power plane and as I said it appears now that I can put a prop on there that's going to give me 90 grams thrust and at the moment all up weight of this is stand by drum roll all up weight is 80 grams so if I can get 90 grams thrust on an 80 gram model that is certainly going to fly that's a one to one power to weight ratio so actually it's working out very well but and good fun too keeping me busy while the weather's bad okay so we're just waiting for the prop now and then that's going to be installed and this worked out really well with my design idea of cutting a hole there and adding an elevator to this original tail plane yeah dead pleased with that that's going to be really good okay don't go away see you in a bit okay so here she is ready for a maiden just shut that socket down so in the end the all up weight was about 90 grams with the 200 milli amp battery thrust should be about 90 grams so i think there should be no problems at all with this flying and that was my model finder beeping pain in the butt when you don't need it beeping but a godsend when you've lost it in the bushes or trees somewhere okay um managed to get the model finder in just in there i'll show you that in a second we'll take this off and take a look was all a tight fit and quite a challenge the central servo idea saved me six grams only using one servo and that worked out but it was quite a fiddle actually getting these set up right elevator servo worked out well and to get my cog as i'll say in a minute i've had to put 3.8 grams on there but it's balancing nicely at about there which i think is about right anyway so that's it i'm well pleased with it quite a challenge but let's take a closer look battery fits in nicely in the top there but it's tight so but it does work and as you'll see i've actually got the receiver pushed down there it's got some shrink around it now to protect it and the antenna comes out just there which is perfect because it's well away from the speed controller and any possible interference but let's go back a couple of hours to the final stages of my build props arrived recommended prop for that br1104 3 by 20 or 3020 unfortunately the hole on that was too small for the 1.5 mil shaft but i just had the perfect drill to drill it out and that slides on really nice snug fit so that's fine it's a shame i couldn't use my prop saver because i'm gonna to have to be careful how i land or i might break a prop but that that's fine and in fact all up weights around the 90 gram mark and it will actually just about prop hang because the thrust from that's supposed to be about 90 grams so i'm rather pleased with that moving further back i've managed to get all the electrics in here it's a shame i couldn't use that speed controller that would have saved me a gram over this one but anyway and weight is important when you're making these small models anyway that's gone in there nicely some very small bullet connectors on the motor even managed to get the model finder in with this rather scruffy hole made an inset onto the inside so that this would still go in that works fine receiver smallest one i've ever used as i said it probably cost me about six pounds but perfect for this kind of job weight of that is only 2.5 grams believe it or not so that's amazing word of warning you do have to solder these pins on when you buy it and it's quite a delicate soldering job found it quite a challenge and i'm a reasonable solderer they also bind in a, this kind of receiver also binds in a different way to the large ones doesn't have a bind that you don't use a binding plug it's got actually got a binding button on it but absolutely fine the way i've got it installed the way i've tested installation of it is it slides in with the antenna facing that way which will come out here so that's well away from any interference receivers well away from the speed controller which can cause interference that slides in there and just fits perfectly under there which is which is great it looks a bit vulnerable so i'm going to put a bit of shrink over it before i put it in so that's fine moving further back my idea of saving a bit of weight these come out at about six grams a time so say only putting one in save me six grams that goes fine in there nice angle of thrust to my ailerons to make my levers i just chopped a little bit of one of those and hot glued it in but as you can see 
that works really well. I'll fire it up in a minute and show you. Likewise, elevator servo is in. And as it happened, I had to go as far back as possible with that to get my CG right, which is about here. And it needs 3.8 grams on the tail still to actually get it to balance around here. That's not bad really, nothing much I could do about that. Had to extend the servo wire a long way so that it comes through to here. And I just cut a groove with a blade and tucked it in. I shall put, them, put some tape over that so you can't see it. A bit of tape either side over that. Put a bit of tape over that too actually, just to cover that up. But that's worked well. I'll show you that activated. Let me just plug in and you will probably hear the model finder going if I leave it too long. Oh, and incidentally, yes, I didn't say as far as the front end goes, plenty of room for the battery in there. I'll put a bit of Velcro or something so I can stick that and connect it and just plunk it on. But that bit worked out really well. Amazing. The smallest thing I've ever worked on, and I must admit it was quite a fiddle. Quite a fiddle actually getting these the right length and trimming them up. And that's the idea of the V-Bend, actually. If, it, if you can't quite get it to be in the right place, you adjust the angle of the V. But you maybe know that if you've built models. Let me turn on. And plug in. Tuck that in there for the minute. So, like I say, this worked pretty well. Elevator was relatively easy. So I'm very happy with the way this has turned out. And centre of gravity in the right place now. I see no reason why this shouldn't fly. Let me just unplug that. Model finder is going to start beeping, which is a pain. But when you've lost the model. I tell you what, that is a very welcome sound when you start hearing that beeping. I'll put a link to the model finders as well on all the components on the comments below. So I'm just waiting for the right day for a maiden. I've enjoyed doing this. Very frustrating, tricky job at times. But I've enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed it too. If you have, why not give it a like. Check out some of the other vids on my channel. And why not even maybe subscribe to see the maiden. And also don't forget to have a look and see the four engine version of this with the drone motors which turned out mega light so that's it for now anyway like i said i hope you've enjoyed it hopefully i'll catch you all again soon and don't miss the maiden but that's all for now see you later